Oh, hey, <laughs> it's been a while since I made a video. Sorry, sorry about that. The, what had happened was my wife and I had our second kid and let's just say getting used to the two under two <gasps> schedule is a bit challenging, but don't worry, we'll get it all figured out. But while I was gone, I was reading some of the comments and I've noticed there's two comments that show up quite a bit. And we're gonna try to answer those questions or those comments today. Now the first one is people asking me how much better would a fan printed with resin be than the normal FDM ones that we print all the time. Like if you took the same exact model and you printed one in FDM and one in SLA, what would be the performance difference if there was any between the two? So that's one we're going to try to hit today. The other is people asking me how much performance is just lost by the 3D printing process. For example, if we took this fan, the A12X25, and somehow we got our hands on that CAD model and we 3D printed it, what would be the performance loss just by the 3D printing process? And that was gonna be a little tricky to do, but we're gonna to try to do or answer both of those commonly asked questions. Now, the first one really isn't that hard. I just have to get out one of my resin 3D printers, which I pretty much never do. A lot of you ask me why I never resin 3D print and Honestly, the biggest reason why I don't do it very often is I don't really like it. It smells, it's not as easy as FDM printing. There's, I mean, the, the resin itself isn't really good for your skin. So there's PPE involved, there's post-processing, you have to wash and cure your prints. It's just a lot of hassle for essentially better service finish. Now there's no denying that the, the quality of part that comes off of this one, at least when it comes to the, the surface finish and the detail you can capture with the resin printer is far greater than FDM. But for what I do, I don't really need that uh, very often. So for the most part, I don't really resin print. But today for you, I bust out the old Elegoo Saturn and I chose the Elegoo Saturn because it's the biggest resin printer that I have. And a fan kind of fits pretty well within the Elegoo build space, it kind of smells. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. The second one's not gonna be as easy to do. So because we use the A12X25 for literally everything on the channel, I think it's only just that we use the A12X25 to compare what an actual fan does versus a 3D printed version of it. And the, originally I was like, you know, I've kind of done this in the past. I have a model of the A12X25 on my Thingiverse. I'll just download that and use that model. It'll make it real easy. I downloaded it and to be honest, <laughs> I don't really like it. The geometry of that model was not as good as I remembered. And I just don't think it'd be a good one-to-one -one comparison for this video. So that was out and I was like, I can make a new one. But then I thought maybe you out there, maybe you have uh, a good model, a good high fidelity model of the A12X25. So I reached out on my community tab, asked anybody if they did. And I didn't really get any responses from anybody saying that they had a good model of the A12X25. But I did get an interesting comment from Phil, who said that one time he was looking for a model of the A14 and he just asked Noctua and they're like, ah, here you go, here's the model. And he's like, you should try that. Now, I didn't, I work in a, I work in an engineering firm. We don't just hand out our models, our 3D models willy nilly. So I really didn't think Noctua was just gonna give me the A12X25 CAD data. But I was like, what do I got to lose? So I sent him an email and I didn't, I didn't hear anything back. But then I remembered Noctua follows me on Twitter for whatever reason, so I sent him a DM and then they also didn't respond. Bummer. But as a last ditch effort, I was like, why don't I just tweet at them? It seems like they always respond to people tweeting at them. So I was like, hey, Noctua, could I get a, could I get a model of the A12X25? And they said no, which surprises nobody. So we were back to square one. I was gonna have to bust out the digital calibers, put on the tryhard pants, and try to make as close to a perfect model of the A12X25 that I could. Now, what I ended up with was obviously not a carbon copy, but I think it came out pretty darn close, at least close enough to give us an idea of the performance drops if there is any, which I'm sure there's gonna be. So I took that model, I threw it on my Prusa, which is kind of the go-to printer, I've had it forever. It was like the first printer I bought and it seems to always work. Printed out a copy of it, and then I took that same model and I put it on the Elegoo Saturn, poured in some resin, and proceeded to fail a few times making prints. I don't have the most experience with resin printing, like I said, so I forgot the whole, don't put your model directly on the build plate if you have a large surface area because it just doesn't want to come up and then if you use a lot of supports it just becomes one big blob and then there's the big thing where you want to angle your models like 45 degrees which give you like the best the best results so after a bit we got there and I ended up with two models that look well two models that are the same just printed in different mediums and they're very similar to the original so I have a I have the original and then I have two models one FDM and one SLA 
And there's no denying there is a difference in quality between the two, even if they are printed from the same exact 3D model. The FDM one was printed at my normal 0.2 millimeter layer height, and it still looks like it was pulled straight out of Minecraft <laughs> when compared to the resin print. The resin print is very smooth. It's much more similar. It's much, it's much closer to the original than uh, FDM could ever wish to be. So now that I have two fans that are exactly the same model, just printed in different mediums, one with regular filament, one with resin, and I have the original OG A12X25, let's find out what the difference performance is. Now, obviously, the first thing I was gonna do is put these on the smoke test. I wanted to see if there was anything I could visually see that showed a difference between these three fans, and for the most part, they pretty much look the same. If I was gonna split hairs, I could say that the A12X25, the OG, looked a little cleaner, but meh, for the most part, they're all identical. The sound test is where things got a bit more interesting. The original came in around 43.6 dBA. The resin came in around 44.9 dBA. And the FDM came in around 45.2 dBA. So far, everything's kind of lining up exactly as you would think. You would obviously think this is the original. It is obviously the best geometry of the bunch. The resin, we would all think, would do the second best, and the FDM third. But what was most interesting to me is if you look at the sound profile of the A12X25, you can see a large peak around 35 hertz, a peak that's present in both the resin and FDM models. And I took that to mean that although my model is obviously not perfect, it's pretty darn close. How close? I ran all three fans on the same setup. The one that we're currently using on this season of the Fan Showdown, essentially what we're doing is taking each fan, placing them on a 120 millimeter AIO. We're pushing air through that AIO and then measuring the airspeed at the end of a wind tunnel. And the idea is that the fan that produces the most airflow through the wind tunnel, through the radiator, would have essentially the best cooling performance. So today, this specific A12X25 produced 490 feet per minute of airflow. The FDM model only managed 477 feet per minute of airflow. The resin print, on the other hand, managed 487 feet per minute of airflow. And keep in mind, this, these are essentially the same exact model, and I ran them on the same exact fan frame, so the only difference is due to the medium that they were printed in, which is, which is really interesting. That's pretty darn close. The FDM, when compared to the original, the FDM model showed a decrease of about 2.7%, and the, the resin one showed a difference or a decrease in performance of about 0.6%. So to me, that means two things. One is FDM printed fans are about 2% worse than resin printed fans, which is very interesting. It's something a lot of you wanted to know. And the second is my model isn't really half bad. When compared to the original, 0.6% decrease in performance is, pff, that's pretty good. So that kind of raises another question. Should, like I said, I, I'm not a huge fan of resin printing. It wasn't as bad as I remembered it this time around, but Knowing that a resin printed fan is about 2% better than an FDM printed fan, should the next season of the Fan Showdown go to resin printing? If you think that's something we should do, let me know in the comments down below because I will then look for a printer bigger than this one. Now this one works for a single fan, but a good thing about resin printing is no matter how much stuff you have on the build plate, it still prints at the same speed. So if I find something larger that I could print four fans at once, that would drastically reduce the print time of doing one fan at a time on my FDM printer. Plus you guys like to create some real crazy stuff. So the bigger, the bigger, the better. But I'll leave that up to you. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you have a different idea for a video, some other question or something else you wanna see done, uh, make sure to let me know as well. I could use, uh, use some ideas right now as I get adjusted to my, my, new, my new life. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you again much, much sooner than uh, this last time around. I hope you get subscribed. We'll see you next time.